Good evening. I first met Rodney O'Neill 13 years ago, and some people call, like to call him the Rainmaker. I was a junior at Michigan State University at the time. Uh, I was also a participant in the Inroads program. It's an amazing organization that develops underserved youth for corporate leadership. Through this program, I was able to obtain my first internship at Delphi in the summer of 2000. I distinctly remember Rodney, at the time, a very, a very busy vice president inviting me into his, into his office for a conversation. And one simple question, what is it that I want to do with my life? Such a simple question has set me on an incredible journey, has inspired me to develop to what I am today. It was the first of, of many mentoring moments that continue. Rodney O'Neill and Delphi have played a critical role in my career as well as my family's, career, my family's life as well. I'm so very proud to introduce the video and tell you more about our amazing company as well as the man that leads us. Afterwards, Jack Butler will introduce our honoree. Thank you. To move and be moved is what drives us. To rev motors, imaginations, and everyday lives. From innovations that entertain and keep us safe, to powertrain systems that inspire the scenic route. Our robust product and service solutions are paving the way towards new standards of excellence. For better mileage and longer trips. For greener savings and a healthier planet. Fueled by determination, collaboration, and technological grace. From automated driving to greener and cleaner technologies, Delphi's president and CEO, Rodney O'Neill, is committed to creating the future and nurturing tomorrow's leaders. It takes tenacity, determination, intelligence, and passion to move and be moved, to guide others and oneself towards excellence. Rodney O'Neill's leadership qualities emerged at an early age. Raised in Dayton, Ohio during the Civil Rights era, his parents instilled that education provides opportunities and that opportunities are the shapers of success. Whether delivering newspapers or industry dissertations, engineering automotive systems or company futures, he seized every available opportunity and now stands as mentor to countless young people and leader of more than 160,000 employees in 32 countries as president and CEO of one of the world's most acclaimed automotive suppliers. Delphi is proud to honor our champion influencer. Broad transcends all cultures and languages and connects with people like no other can. The most I could ask for out of a CEO is something Rod delivers every day. An unyielding commitment to integrity and a willingness to set the tone at the top for our employees worldwide. He truly balances compassion with making sure that we're giving all we can. His ability to inspire you, to get, to get the most out of you, uh, to get more out of you than you actually thought was possible, that's the role model that Rod has been for me. Great leaders have followers, and people want to follow Rod because he inspires them to perform their best. He can take an ordinary circumstance and turn it into a teaching moment. Really want to thank you for your inspirational leadership, the energy that you bring to the company, and uh, your day-to-day -day enthusiasm that's helped us position the company to do tremendous things, uh, both today as well as into the future. It's been a great journey to be on with you. Your leadership has made a difference for the entire team. You always tell us to make a difference. But we can't begin to tell you what kind of difference you've made for Delphi and the global Delphi team. Congratulations, Rod, on winning this well-deserved award. Continue to make a difference. Rod, congratulations. Jack Butler. Please, please welcome back dinner chair Jack Butler. Nine years ago this summer, actually on the 4th of July. I got a phone call from Steve Miller. He'd just been named CEO of Delphi Corporation, one of the largest global automotive suppliers that you've heard was spun off from GM some years earlier. Nicknamed the Turnaround Kid, Steve had just been brought in by the board to help figure out what lay ahead for Delphi and its stakeholders, and he wanted some help. 
As it turned out, I'd spend most of my time over the next five years with the senior management team at Delphi, many of whom are here in the audience today, to work with the team to help navigate through the automotive crisis that threatened to bring about the Second Great Depression. And I am convinced, absolutely, that it would have been a Great Depression, but for the government intervention in the automotive industry and a few key players. One of those is the man we're about to honor this evening with the Albert Schweitzer Leadership Award, Rod O'Neill. Rod was the second, maybe the third person that I'd met at Delphi. As then President and Chief Operating Officer, he ran their global businesses with the team. And he's always been about the team. And as it turned out, and it took me only a few weeks to sort of figure this out, the main reason that both Steve as the new CEO and I as an outside advisor were in Troy, Michigan, was because Rod and the team had the vision to understand in 2004, some four years before the auto industry would tumble into complete disarray, the Delphi's then business model just wasn't sustainable. And he was determined to fix it without interrupting the continuity of supply to the world's original equipment manufacturers who would be forced to cease operations if Delphi's ocean of single source parts was disrupted for any reason. Today, as Delphi's Chief Executive Officer and President, he leads more than 160,000 people, oversees 126 major manufacturing sites, some 15 technical centers, 32 countries across the world. But I'm getting ahead of myself. To understand Rod O'Neill, you have to know that he was born to parents who moved from the south to the north in the late 1940s. They moved to Dayton, Ohio, actually. And they wanted to seek opportunity. And that, that opportunity and, and, and trying to seek it went through the early civil rights era. In Rod's words, as he tells his own story, his parents believed that things would change for minorities and that there would be opportunities for those who were ready. Rod often repeats the word opportunity and says that it's been a shaper of his life, as you heard in the video. Now, it's good to have opportunity. I think a lot of us try to make our own opportunities, but we also have to understand that there are also, also extraordinary people who show up on the stage from time to time. Rod started as a paperboy at 13, and then he became paperboy of the year with his picture in the front of the Dayton News. Not, that didn't end it. He turned that into a circulation job in the circulation department that lasted all the way into, into college. So the paperboy became the circulation department team on that, that team. Like most of us who found success, Rod's not been without his mentors, which in his case included his high school counselor who had to fill out Rod's application for the college that the counselor thought Rod would flourish at, and he followed that advice, and he did. From 1976, when he started his career at GM as a production engineer making steering wheels until today, as he leads Delphi, he's worked in the same business his entire career. But boy, that business, wow, has it changed, in large part due to Rod. This company's success story is truly remarkable, and it's a direct result of his leadership. Back in 2005, Delphi was a broad provider of automotive components, many of which were not profitable. It was really his foresight that led to a draft business plan for success, a plan where Delphi thrived to become the best of the best, a true leader in those segments which shaped the automobile of the future as they saw it. As part of that strategic transformation, Delphi changed nearly everything in its business. They cut the business in half. They changed the number of business units from 27 to 10. They cut their core product lines from 119 to 33. They completely realigned the portfolio, and I remember the mantra over and over again, it's got to be safe, it's got to be green, it's got to be connected. Something Rod said transcended borders and was what the world cared about. And he was right. Delphi completely reinvented itself and stepped back onto the world stage back in 2009, had an initial public offering in 2011, and by the way, since then, its stock has only quadrupled. Today, the company has a market capitalization over $21 billion, already having returned considerable cash to its early investors. And it's diversified its business dramatically since 2005. 70% of Delphi's business then was in North America. Today, 30% is in North America, 30% in Europe, 30% in Asia, and 10% in South America. Along the way, as you know from what you've heard tonight, he's mentored countless young people and emerging leaders. He's reached into communities where opportunities are still not equal. And he's done his part to even the playing field. The man knows how to pay it forward. And he also understands that we make our own opportunities. From being that newspaper boy of the year, to ringing the bell at the New York Stock Exchange, to Mark Delphi's initial public offering, 
which wrote was, and I think for a long time will be, one of the largest industrial reorganizations in this nation's history. Rod seized his opportunities and created them for countless others. I think, frankly, as I said earlier, one of the other honorees, if Dr. Schweitzer was here, he'd be proud. I know Hugh O'Brien, sitting over there, is proud. Uh, and all of us at Hobie are proud of what Rod has accomplished uh, and the way in which he's accomplished it. It's my great honor to invite Rod O'Neill to join the ranks of global leaders who've been recognized by the Albert Schweitzer Leadership Award. Congratulations. This doesn't happen too often to me, but I'm virtually speechless. And uh, because I, I did not know what people were going to do or say, so I was stunned. And I just want to thank uh, Jack for the, the lovely intro, and, and above all, Eddie and the rest of the Delphi team that, 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 that put that video together. It was, uh, it was a walk down memory lane for me. And isn't that baby picture cute? <laughs> really is. Before I start, though, I'd like to uh, make sure that I uh, congratulate my fellow recipients. I'm, I'm very honored to stand among you tonight. It's a, it's a wonderful evening. And I also want to thank Hobie for this prestigious award, and above all, for 56 years of making a difference. And as I sit here and, and listen to all the wonderful things that this great organization does, two words came to mind that were near and dear to my heart that this organization, I think, stands for, and that's oppor uh, um, opportunity creation. You know, I grew up in America during some very racially troubled times. Now, back then, it would have been extremely difficult for a minority child, especially one of African-American ancestry, to have thought they were destined for anything other than a subordinate role in this great country. I could have easily looked at the state of the world and surmised that I would never, ever have an opportunity to do more. But I was fortunate. I had parents that believed in the civil rights trailblazers who were trying to change this great nation's social consciousness. And they were confident that things would get better. And they stressed the importance of being ready for the opportunities that would come and being prepared to seize them. I am where I am today because America did change, and as my parents predicted. And true enough, opportunity was created. And fortunately, I was prepared for it. Hobie is rooted in the same beliefs of creating positive change and helping to prepare our youth for the opportunities of the future. So I encourage the young people here tonight and the Hobie current students and also the alumni around the world to take advantage of the Hobie experience and to take heed of the guidance provided by their parents and their mentors in order to ensure that they are prepared for the vast array of opportunities that lay before them. There are inventions to be created, diseases to be cured, social injustice to be eliminated, poverty to be eradicated, and a planet to be saved. And the world needs you ready, willing, and able to seize the opportunities and not squander the moment. You simply must absolutely make a difference. I'm proud to be with you tonight. The next generation of trailblazers, our Hobie alumni, I thank you so much for this honor tonight. Good evening.